Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and look what I have to show you today. Now I'm going to be treading uh, carefully within the boundaries of the MDA, probably a little bit more carefully than I need to but I don't want to be annoying anybody. But we're going to be taking a first look, so I'm just going to be showing it to you but it's the new Republic of Gamers Asus Rampage 4 Extreme. And uh, yes, this obviously features the new chipset from Intel, which is the X79. And uh, it will support the upcoming 2011 processors. Um, so there's a fair amount for us to have a look at today. Like I said, I'm, I'm having to go really careful. So we're going to be going, uh, looking more at the board and the like. Now, what we can see here, I know you're all going to be looking over at the... Uh, so I'm going to do it that way. Oh, I'm going to do it that way, I don't mind. Anyway, we've got something in there called Overclock Key or OC Key, which is part of the OC Tweak It feature. Uh, and this apparently is the key to real-time overclocking. And it says to tweak the parameters of your system in real time with a convenient graphical overlay displayed right on the screen with OSD Tweak It. So that's pretty cool. There's OSD Monitor. Um, it's they're shouting about Extreme Engine Digi Plus 2, which is optimum power efficiency with premium components and intelligent uh, digital design. Apparently, you can hotwire your system, uh, and it says love to overbolt, but got mad trimming the tiny variable resistors with the VGA hotwire feature. Plug in the two wire capable onboard and solder two wires on the VGA, VGA's voltage regulators and accurately adjust the voltage. That's pretty cool. That'll be interesting to go into and test. There's also something called Sub-Zero Sense, which is to find out how cold the board is if you're using dry ice or LN2. Uh, and apparently, uh, there is a way to be able for it to be able to support the old 1366 fitment. So you'll be able to use 1366 um, fitment uh, air coolers as well as the new 2011 socket stuff. Now, I'm not going to show you the back of the board because there's too much stuff on there that could get me into trouble NDA-wise. So I'm literally just going to open the box. We'll put that box to one side and we're going to look at the accessories first. And I can uh, open it. Right, so accessories-wise, I'm going to pick up straight away what has just grabbed my attention. And that's this new OC key. Now, obviously, I've not used this yet, but there's a USB port on the side there. And there's also some, I think that's another USB, like an internal USB connection there. But I don't know yet because I'm literally looking at this uh, for the first time as well. We've also got DVI connector on the back and one there. So you've got a male one end and a female the other end. This will be quite interesting to uh, use. On the other side of the board, of the box, sorry, we've got a triple three-way SLI connector. There's also, quite interestingly, a four-way SLI connector, and that's something the original Rampage didn't support. Well, I say the original Rampage, I mean the Rampage 3. There's a two-way SLI connector, and uh, that one appears to be a crossfire connector. Uh, we've got some uh, some of the pro belt connectors so that you can uh, register the uh, voltages. Good old Asus quick connect things. There's a back panel kind of I/O plate, and then you've got your manual, your CD drive thing, and all that kind of stuff. So we've got that out of the way. Then you've got a selection of uh, SATA cables here. We've got SATA cables, uh, SATA 3 and SATA 2, and there's also the cable for the overclock key, which is uh, quite interesting there. Um, and then there's uh, the bracket there for you to be able to change the, um, the back plate so that you can run 1366 socket CPUs, which that, I think, is brilliant. That would also sell very well uh, as a separate component, I think. I actually didn't realise that the uh, mounting was the same as uh, 1366. But there we go. So that's in there. We've also got 
Um, ah, this is a, a selection of voltage cables so that you can read, uh, test the voltages. You've got the, this is the cable for the ROG Connect, and that's it. That's the end of your accessories. Now, we could say that I've teased you long enough uh, with not being able to look at the board, but I'd say that I haven't really teased you for long enough at all. So we could put it there and we could put it back again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it out. And uh, I have to admit, guys, I am just as interested in this as you. So I'm going to turn the box upside down and then I'm going to bring the board in. And oh my, what a board it is. As long as I don't kill it. So there we go, that's your first look. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bring, uh, zoom the camera in a bit and then you can uh, get a nice up close look and I'll move the board around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start Ah, there we go. I'm going to start on this edge of the uh, board. And you can see there we've got an LCD poster. Uh, that's, that's a slow mode button, apparently. There. We've also got a mode for LN2 mode, which is a jumper. But I'm having a look at this at the same time as you are. Oh, I do apologise. I'm going to zoom out a bit. Oh, wrong way. There we go, right, I do apologise. I'm going to uh, try and show you this. If you have a look, there we go. Right, we will get there. Right, LCD poster up there. Um, you've also got a, this is for L, um, slow mode. This is LN2 mode, so it's, you can see straight away this is heavily aimed at the overclockers. We've got a start button and a reset button here. Plus this is really handy if you're running lots of graphics cards, uh, maybe with uh, LN2 pots or water cooling in the fact that if you get a card that goes down it won't post. So you can turn the lanes off independently uh, and get the system booting again basically. Then uh, here, I'm just trying to look to see what it's telling me it is, and apparently that's the go button. Obviously, you've got 24 pin power here. I'm going to zoom you out again. There we go. Uh, if we move a little bit further up, you can see the USB 3 there. Coming slightly down again, you can see two red and two black SATA ports but also I'm just going to hold this board now I've given up with that two red and two black SATA ports and then you've also got the um, LN2 temperature mode or temperature sensors there you can see I've not taken the sticker off of it because this is literally just come out of the box as you saw it Southbridge heatsink here with the um, CPU fan on it as well so we've probably more than likely got the X79 chips underneath that anyway. Put another button down here, which is the BIOS switch. We've got a second USB 3 external header here, which is nice to see. A couple of USB 2s. I'm going to move it across a bit. Uh, we can see two BIOS chips here. If I bring it down a bit, you can see one, two, three, four PCI Expresses there. I'm not going to talk to you too much about um, the lanes and the like, but these two, which are the furthest apart, are the PCI Express 16 slots. So if you have a look, there's one, two, three full complete slots between the uh, two PCI Express 16s. Now. The good thing about having three slots is Asus recently have been releasing a lot of triple slot uh, cards. So if you were to have a triple slot um, card in this, for argument's sake, like a Mars 2, you could also run 
a second one as well. And I can exclusively announce now that I have both of the Mars 2s that are in the UK at the moment for press. And after I've reviewed this particular board in full, um, I will then, uh, about a week or two weeks later, be doing a full review with two Mars 2s on this board, um, which will be a tidy little exclusive for Overclock 3D. Um, so, yeah, we are going to be testing this board to the uh, absolute end of the limits available. So we're going to be effectively sticking four GTX 580s on this board and trying to overclock them all to death to try and get the best scores out of it possible, all with air or water cooling, admittedly. But uh, could be a nice, interesting one for you all to see. Now I'm going to come down a bit and obviously... We've seen a lot of it recently, but this is quad channel RAM, uh, which basically means you have two sticks uh, either side, uh, but this has obviously got the extra set as well, so you can have uh, eight DIMMs in total. Now, if we put this into context, if you have two four gigabytes on this side, two four gigabytes on this side, that's 16 gigabyte of RAM. If obviously you then populate them all with four gigabyte sticks, that's 32 gigabyte of RAM. Um, it basically essentially is dual, dual channel. So it's two lots of dual channel. Whereas 1155 is dual, this is almost like adding an extra kit onto it. That's just basically. Uh, if I tip the board up slightly there, and you can have a look on here and here, you can see there's an eight pin connector, but there's only another four pin connector. There isn't two eights. Now there was two eights on the original Rampage 3. Anyway, so we've got the main Southbridge heatsink, then we've got another um, heatsink here, which appears, just having a look, to be cooling MOSFETs. You've then got more, another heatsink at the top, cooling MOSFETs, and another heatsink at the side, cooling yet ever more MOSFETs. So we're expecting a fair amount of power to go through. One thing I will say is if you look here, there is a six pin PCI Express connector. This isn't for the CPU power, this is to bump up this, um, the power available along the PCI Express lanes. So that's why that's there. Previously, this would have been a Molex connector. If we look on the back of the board, at the top end, I'll go top end so you can actually see it. It's difficult to see what's going on in the camera with my studio lights because they are blinding me. There we go. This end, there's uh, a green and blue, sorry, green and purple PS2 connection. Um, so that will fit keyboard or a mouse. And then we've got two USB uh, 2 connections here. There is um, the Rod Connect button on the right hand side and then a BIOS clear button on the left hand side. <coughs> Next to that, we have three USB 2s. The white one at the bottom is the connector for your uh, ROG Connect cable. The blue bit at the top here is a uh, Bluetooth adapter, I do believe, which is built into the board. Then we've also got two more USB 2s and an eSATA, which also doubles up as a USB connector. Then we have two sets of USB 3 connectors. Above one of them is a uh, gigabit LAN connector, and then we've got yet another USB 2 connector up here, which is also an eSATA. Then we move on to the audio, and you've got digital there and the normal analog stuff. I'm just looking at the board quickly to see if I can spot what um, chip is on it. And I can't, but I'll look it up at the board when we do the main review anyway. But you can see the back panel connectors there. But now, what I'm going to do is just zoom you out again. So that you can get a good look at the board itself. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think that is one sexy looking board and it is ram packed. One thing I should say is, if you have a look at the, connect the connector there, that extra bit there 
is extra motherboard real estate. They call it EATX, but it's an ATX board with just a little bit extra around the outsides. It fits most ATX um, cases. I say most. Uh, generally, the worst that you'll get is it may cover your cable routing grommets up a little bit. Um, but I've seldomly found a case that it didn't fit. But it's worth having a look. You can pretty much work it out yourself because it just needs an extra kind of 15 millimeters on the outside. Um, so you can generally work it out just by looking at pictures of your case or looking at the case you've got yourself. But there we go. That is your first look at the Asus Republic of Gamers Rampage 4 Extreme. Oh dear Lord, I'm looking forward to testing this. But anyways guys, I'm going to leave this here now. Um, I hope you've all remembered to mop the drool up off of your desk from where you've been slobbering so much looking at this sexy hardware. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another first look for you. Out.